up everyone it is your girl gel beauty 87 here aka grace and today we're gonna get into the worst makeup i tried in 2022 so i got a little box here sitting next to me and it has all the makeup that i was not impressed with that i tried in 2022 so without further ado girl let's get into it because thank goodness every year i feel like this box doesn't have as much of stuff that i do like but since i spend all my money on all this stuff i'm always like you know upset whenever i have stuff i don't like there's a couple of odd things in here that i thought i had put in the um what do you call the video that i didn't i think i tried all this stuff this year don't quote me some of the stuff i feel like i might have tried um earlier and i just put it in here this year or i bought it like this year and that's why it's getting put in here this year so without further ado girl let's get into it so i have the ram beauty blurring primer i wasn't impressed by this it's not to say it's like a huge a horrible product it's just like i feel like for the price point it doesn't blur the way my other primers blur and doesn't do as good a job as my other primers do so i'm kind of just like you know with all the other good blurring primers out here for this to be mediocre and then be the price point it is i just wasn't impressed with it if it had a drugstore price point to it then i wouldn't be as upset but it's like the fact that you're not doing as much as everybody else doing and then um you got this higher price tag because i think that's in the 20s and i'm like in the 20s and shit mm -mm. no 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 not at all Let's see, do i have any other primers before i get into these other complexion things oh yeah so the rim beauty was this under eye primer cool things blurring under eye balm so i wasn't impressed with this either like the jacqueline hill one i hate to say is way better than this one i don't know what it is like the consistency of this is really weird and then i feel like when i put it underneath the eyes it doesn't like do any cooling or any blurring underneath my eyes so it's just this weird consistency that it has to it that i'm not really that impressed with so i wasn't impressed with basically the primers that came from this brand that came in the collection with the um concealer the concealer I have been able to make work for me over time, so that's why it's not in here. Because, but y'all remember when I first tried that, I wasn't impressed with it either. So it's like, I haven't been impressed. With, I wasn't impressed with the first set of things I tried from Rim Beauty. The setting spray was nice. I've viewed, I've almost finished it up, but you know, there's a lot of stuff that to me was just okay from the brand that I feel like people were trying to make seem like more than it was. Um, I got a few concealers in here. And one foundation. So I don't remember when I tried this foundation. I'm not going to laugh pretend like I do. But I just know it's overpriced for what it is. And I wasn't impressed with it. So this is the Clay DePaul Radiant Fluid Foundation Matte. In the shade 090 Very Deep Ochre. I was not impressed with the foundation at all. They give you an extra 0.1 ounce of product. But I'm like for 100 and some odd dollars. Like you're not giving what you need to be giving. The La Mer is running circles around you a million times over. This just was not impressive to me at all. And I want all my coins back. On top of coins back. Like, I, I need coins on top of coins back. I try to use it pretty often, though, just because it was so expensive. And I want to get my money's worth out of it in spite of me not liking it. But I do not like this product at all. I do not think it's worth the hype. And if that's all what Clay Depot has to offer, I, I don't need to buy anything else from you. Because that, that wasn't it. I have three concealers that I thought were horrible so i know i bought this because of um what's her name um coco swatches this is the maybelline super stay active wear concealer i have the shade 50 i was not impressed with this it just seems really liquidy i don't feel like it gives a lot of coverage and it doesn't it doesn't wow me to the point where i felt like you know it was one I want to pick for consistently. So it's like I'm actually probably going to get this with my cousins just because I wasn't impressed with it at all. So I, that's why it's bad to me. It's like it doesn't give enough coverage for my personal liking. I like the fact that it was lightweight, but it's like you need to be lightweight in coverage. And the coverage to me and this was definitely lacking. It felt like it was just like a watery consistency and I just wasn't feeling any of that. So now you for the lot. Now this rose ink one, when I first tried it out, I liked it. But then after trying it out for a little while longer, like it started, um... I don't know if it's like is it already expired early or something but it started like looking really streaky when i put it on and then i went to blend it out like the coverage would disappear and it wouldn't like stay on the skin i don't know what was wrong with this concealer after a while but when i first tried it out i actually really liked it if y'all remember in videos i told you i liked it but like it started changing up and it was not a vibe i'm gonna just try to finish it off honestly along with this clay de po and just not think about it anymore because i was not impressed with it at all then this Lawless Concealer. This is probably the worst concealer I tried this year. Y'all saw in the video, it did me real dirty. Like, I bought it because I keep wanting to try this brand Lawless and like something from it. But it's like, I like the original foundation from it, but I don't like this concealer at all. This is in the shade Coconut Sugar. This is the Lawless Conceal the Deal Full Coverage Concealer. 
I didn't find it to be full coverage. I found it to be just like the rose ink one. It was streaky and it didn't do a good job of um, giving coverage even though it says it's full coverage. I was fine down the middle of the face but like underneath the eyes where I actually need the coverage. You want the coverage? I feel like this is terrible. So to me this is just a concealer I would highlight my face with. I wouldn't do anything else with this. Like it can't go underneath the eyes. It's not giving that type of coverage. It was cakey and it like uh, didn't build on it build up well at all. It was awful. Like so I don't recommend any of those concealers I just showed you. Absolutely not. Let's get into some powders. So I know everybody else likes this powder and I'm just a weirdo out. But what I don't like about this, this is the Jaclyn Hill Powder Move Loose Setting Powder. First of all, it doesn't give me coverage. I don't like that whole aspect of it. Like when I put on a setting powder, I wanted to get coverage. I know Jaclyn said it wasn't going to give coverage and I'm still willing to try it out because I wanted it to like, you know, give a nice finish. It does give a nice finish, but what I don't like about this is it oxidizes your foundation. This would be good if you want to wear your summer shades in the wintertime so that when you have to buy two separate shades, I feel like this powder would be good for that because it definitely oxidizes the foundation like I had a foundation that matched my skin perfectly and it darkened it so badly so that's why I don't like this product I don't like it darkening my foundation and I don't like the fact that it doesn't give any coverage I want coverage with the powder and I want it to you know actually say the color it is not darken up my foundation so the fact that this oxidizes and it doesn't give any coverage means it's it's a no-go for me I mean I still might use it in the winter time when I have to put on a winter shade because I know it will darken it up and work nicely for that but otherwise it doesn't serve a purpose in my collection. I'm actually thinking about giving it to one of my cousins. She's an older lady um, and it would work nicely for her and you know since she's like um, she, she's darker than I am when she puts it on top of her foundation it should just even out her complexion so I'm actually going to give this to one of my cousins as a Christmas present or it'll probably be after Christmas because I don't plan on mailing this stuff out right away. Um, the next product I have to talk about is this Rare Beauty Setting Powder. This is the shade Medium Deep. I just like the undertone of this. I don't like when powders are really red. It's like all people my skin tone are like, you know, have red undertones. Some of us have gold undertones. Some of us have olive undertones. Some of us have pink undertones. All of us sometimes have red undertones. So what I found with this collection, because I'm not a fan of the color of the bronzer either, so I should probably just put these together. With this collection, I don't like the fact that it's so such a red undertone to it. I mean, I'm going to hold on to these products because, you know, I do review this brand a lot. But I don't recommend this powder if you don't like a red tone powder because this is definitely giving red tone powder. The form of this is really nice. And if you have, like, I guess a neutral bronzer, you can make it work better. Because, like, the fa Fancy Face said the same thing I said about this product. The formulation of it is really nice. It has a wonderful formula. It's just the fact that they decided it needed to be so red toned is what I don't like about it. If you all know me, then you know this is a product I would only use in the summertime because I like red tone bronzer in the summertime. When it's fall and winter, which is, like the main season here in Chicago this isn't gonna work for me because I don't like this type of undertone on my product so I like this product I don't like the undertone that comes with it and I don't like the undertone of this powder the powder is okay it's not all that it's just an average powder but the fact that it's red I don't like that either so it's like in the future I hope they don't try to force red tones on um people my skin tone because like I'm not necessarily with so we're gonna hold on to both these products just because you know I review this brand a lot and this is a actually really good product it's just I don't like the whole undertone situation to it so some of the things are staying here some of these things are going home i need to separate the things staying and the things going home because all this stuff ain't getting to go home me if, if you ain't up to par you, the b team stays here it, in my grandma's house the, the a team will get to come home now let's get into some bronzers well i have a few of those and then i got a couple of face palettes so i only got one blush and one highlight sorry i got two blushes and a highlighter so of course, this um, Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. Now, I know I didn't try this this year, but I know they had new shades that they added this year. I don't think the formula on this is worth it, but in all fairness, Mel Thompson did say they changed the formula, so that might be why I don't like it, because it's not the original formula. But I wasn't impressed by this. As you see, I have used it a bit, but that's because I paid a high price point for it, so we're going to use it. This is a product I have to use, like, in the wintertime because the shade isn't deep enough, so I can use this in the wintertime and then put, like, a... a my regular bronzer shade on top of it and it'll work out fine but if I try to use this in the summertime it'll be an absolute no-go because it's not deep enough I think it was barely deep enough for Tina the fancy face to use in her video from what I remember and she was pissed about it I'm like I was like it's okay I the formula is nice but I don't feel like the formula is anything right home about but like I said they came up with new shades this year if I remember correctly because I remember seeing a post about it so that's why I wanted to make sure I included this in here that's gonna go home because it's expensive and we need to use it girl 
The next um, bronze I had to talk about that I'm disappointed. I guess this is a trio. This is the one size made for shade bronze and sculpt trio and the shade dark trio. I just don't like the undertones he chose for this. Like, again, these really red bronzes. I don't like really red bronzes, so I don't like that. The one at the top is the one I liked a little bit okay, and I don't really contour, so this one didn't serve a purpose for me. So, like, out of the three, it's only one thing I like in here, and, you know, like, the formula isn't anything exceptional to the point that I felt like I needed to, like, you know have this in my collection i should have returned it but i was like since the brand is new and i want to have a good wealth of things to try if i want to do an overview or a full face or something like that i held on to it but i'm actually thinking about selling this on my macari just because i like i don't like it to that point like this red one i'm not feeling this one is just okay and i don't like these little weird strips because y'all know bronzer brushes are big so what bronzer brush am i supposed to stick in here with these little bitty strips and then as you can see i have not touched the contour at all so this will actually probably go on my macari page once this video is done just because i'm like i'm not I'm not feeling it at all. I don't even want to hold on to it for that purpose. The blushing trios he came out with were really nice, but that just wasn't what I was feeling. Next, I have the Elia Night Light Bronzing Powder in the shade Songbird. Kathleen Nice was raving about this and making it seem like it was so wonderful, and it's just okay. Like, I wasn't super impressed with it. I feel like I have bronzes in my collection that do a way better job. Not to mention, I feel like this shade, again, I can only use in the wintertime. I don't feel like this is a good summer shade for me. I feel like I have to put a pretty deep cream bronzer on and just put this on top of it to give it away in the summertime. So it's like when you don't come out with enough shades, that already makes it bad problems for me. Plus, the formula on this isn't as exceptional as I feel like I was made to believe and that's why i'm disappointed which is why it's in this video i know it didn't come out this year but i tried it this year during the sephora um well the sephora bib sales y'all know they didn't have so many sales y'all i don't even know but i'm thinking about selling that one matter of fact yeah we are gonna go ahead and sell this one just because i'm not a huge fan of that one either so you know you'll be prepared to see it on my car if you're willing to try it out for yourself okay so the next one i have to talk about is the bh cos sorry the be perfect cosmetics fahrenheit bronzer in the shade spark now to me this isn't a bronzer this is a contour look how deep this shade is they're calling this a bronzer no this is a contour shade sweetie and it's like the form on this is really nice though it's just i don't like the fact that i was made to believe this is a, it's a bronzer when we clearly see this is a contour shade based upon the depth and the color that goes along with this so the product is beautiful the formula is nice i don't really use contour and i don't like the fact i was made to believe that this was a bronzer when it's a contour so this one going either go to my cousins or probably go on my Macari page so you can stay tuned and see which one it goes to but um with all the bronzes that came out this year like those just weren't giving and impressing me so i was like yeah we not doing that i hate to put this in here but it's like i hate the fact that every year when she comes out with her holiday collection like it's always super light it doesn't necessarily work for all skin tones um but the formula is really nice so i guess i will spare it this product will be spared this year, but you know, don't, don't take your eyes off me, honey. You can stay here. But next I have, what I, I guess I can consider the face top. So I have this Pat McGrath and Bridgerton. I honestly just hate the packaging on this. That's my issue with this. Because all the products work nice. I don't necessarily like this highlighter though, because it's like one of those glittery highlighters. So I'm not feeling that. I hate the packaging on this. The blushes are wonderful. The highlighter is what I don't like in this product. So that's why I, it's in this video. Because it's like this glittery highlighter just isn't it. The rest of the products are beautiful. The glittery highlighter just isn't it. This one's going to live here just because I really hate the packaging. And I hate the bulkiness of it all. And it's like I don't want that in my house. Like the bulkiness of this packaging just makes it where it has to stay here. It can't, it can't go home with me. Look ma'am. Behave yourself. Stop dropping because you're mad that you possibly that you almost got put in this video, okay? Because we can still put you in here and it'll be here. Stop backing up. Um, so next one I have is the bronze blush and glow palette. I bought this to see if it would be a good alternative for the um what is it, Dawn to Dust palette from Neon MUA and Midas Cosmetics. Because if y'all remember Midas Cosmetics rebranding, and we don't know if they're gonna bring the palette back with Darius or Neon MUA or not. So I got this to see if it'd be alternative because I feel like a lot of the shades in here are similar to the ones in his palette. I wasn't impressed with the formula on this. This bronze, in my personal opinion, is too red. And then this um, shade right here is a little bit too deep for my skin tone. The blush and the highlighter were nice. I just wasn't impressed with the bronzer products, which I'm kind of disappointed in because those were the things I was most excited about about this face palette. So the bronzers in here just weren't giving it for me. So that's why I'm letting it go. I'm going to just give it to my cousins. I'm not even going to try to sell this because it's like it's beauty based so affordable. It's like, water. like those type of things, I try to just give them away as opposed to trying to like sell them. 
Next, I have the Patrick Ta Major Headlines Blush Palette Volume 2. This was a total flop. I mean, if y'all have seen, this is on um, the clearance rack at Sephora right now for like 29 bucks, And he usually charges like 54 for these and they usually fly off the shelves. But I think it's because he picked shades that were way too light. And then he tried to do highlight the thing with this weird gloss and people weren't necessarily feeling it. I wasn't feeling the fact that it was much lighter, but I wanted to compare it to the other ones. And the formula on these is the same as the other ones. It's just, it's much lighter. And then I don't like this weird gel that goes with the highlighter. And I wasn't a huge fan of the highlighter thing. I mainly bought it for the highlighter though because I wanted to see when he came out with individuals later on next year. Which I'm assuming is going to happen if it was going to be you know a good form or not and I wasn't impressed with it I, I was impressed with the blushes but the highlighter is what disappointed me in this palette and the fact that the colors aren't as punchy and bright as they were in the first one so that's why I was disappointed by this palette so that's why it's in this video it's not the quality was bad the quality of the highlighter I wasn't impressed with and the fact that all the shades didn't work best for a lot of skin tones or for a lot of skin tones like it did the year before is why it's disappointing to me and that's why it's in the worst video. Not because the products are bad, just because the highlighter and the color shades he chose I wasn't impressed with. Let me go get a new battery, girl. I didn't talk so much till it's done. Okay, y'all, so I'm almost done. I didn't talk so much to the battery as dad, but I've been filming since like 6 in the morning. It's like 7.45 now. Anyway, so this Pat McGrath highlighter, what is this? This is the holiday one and Venetian Nude. I was totally disappointed in this. I don't know if it's too hard pressed because of like the detail on it or what. But I don't feel like it picked up enough to give me any sort of anything on the face. It was lightly pigmented and I love getting her highlighters because they're usually of much better quality. But this one, because of the pressing on it, I think that's why I didn't pick up on the brush and give me what I need or maybe I'm using the wrong brush. I don't know, but um the coloring's nice. It's just it just didn't pick up well enough for me and I'm like for the price that this costs because I think it's like sixty dollars, some crazy outrageous price like that. I'm like you need to be picking up. You need to be doing everything I asked, okay? And it's not doing that. So I, I th I'm pretty sure I got this this year, don't quote me, but this is the Rose Cheek Duo from Natasha Denona. I got a little small version of it and I wasn't impressed with it. It has the cream and the highlighter, I did use this one and I was not impressed with it at all. I prefer the bigger ones. I feel like they do a better job with quality. I feel like this was one of those like what she did with the initial mini eyeshadow palettes that she skipped on the quality and the quality of this to me is definitely lacking. So I'm not impressed with it and I want to encourage you to just get the bigger ones because I feel like the quality on those is better. The quality on this was not what it was at all. So I'm going to declutter that one and give it to like my cousins. So I'm just dumping stuff in the cousin's bag. They should be happy to get whatever they don't get because there's a lot in here. Now, last but not least, I'm oh, sorry, no, let's get into the lips and then we'll do the eyes last. So I tried this Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics liquid lipsticks and oh my god these are horrible they are dry on the lips i don't know if it's just because i got a more pigmented color for one but these are dry on the lips they give you like that butthole crack lip and they just i don't know they weren't a good formulation at all like these are awful i don't recommend anyone to buy these they are terrible i don't like the formula at all it's just it's, it's an awful liquid lipstick i would encourage you to get the um give beauty ones by Gwen Stefani's brand so I'm just going to give that to my cousins because I, they can figure out what they want to do with it. Maybe you need to hydrate your lips better or something. I don't know, but it's like I didn't want the lip product slipping and sliding all over my lips. So that's why I didn't, you know, do that. But it's, it was just horrible. I mean, it felt awful on the lips. So I know a lot of people probably going to be mad about this, but I don't like the Fenty heat gloss bombs. I don't like the heat ones. I like the ice ones. I like the cream ones. And I like the original ones, but I was not feeling this heat one at all. Like, it's not a vibe for me. The color is nice, but I don't, mm -mm. no, I don't recommend those at all. I mean, I don't feel like it gave me like a tingling sensation or anything like that. I just wasn't impressed with those. I have that one and then I think I have like the lemon one or something like that, but I, I don't like those. So moving forward, I won't be buying any of those. And I really want that like lavender one they had, but when I saw it was heat, I was like, oh no, that's why I didn't buy it. I'm like, Okay, so I found this little baby eyeshadow palette in here. I did a separate video on my eyeshadow palettes, but this slipped through the cracks because you see how tiny it is. But yeah, this is the um, Petite Force Pistachio palette or Pistachio palette. I was not impressed with this one at all. Like, the green in here wasn't giving that great of uh, pigmentation. This nude shade that they love to put in that doesn't necessarily work for my skin tone that well. And then these two shimmers. I feel like there wasn't enough versatility in this palette to do anything with unless you're like a two eye look type of person. You can do these two or maybe these two or something and do an eye look. But I just wasn't impressed with this little quad. The purple one is okay. And the like blue one was good enough to where it didn't end up in here. But this was my least favorite out of all of them. So I want to make sure I let you know that I wasn't impressed by this one. Of course, I'm going to keep it in my collection because... You know, I do a lot of videos on Viseart, so 
It's going to be my collection whether I actually 100% like it or not. Just for like video purposes and things of that nature. Because I am a YouTuber. So, I did not like the Bat Scara and the Bat Eye eyeliners from um, Scooby Doo and Glam Light Collection. I was not impressed with these products at all. I don't feel like this mascara added any length or any volume or anything to my eyes. I was not impressed. I'm going to just try to use it up. Here my girl tells me be done with it all because it didn't give it for me. And then this eyeliner. I... Um, I thought Annette's makeup corner was over exaggerating when she said it like cracked up on like the eyes when she drew it on But like no, she was not over exaggerating at all. It does crack up and it um I felt like it was hard to um make a wing with not that I'm great at doing eyeshadow wings But y'all know what I'm saying like it was really cracky and hard and I just really did not like it So I did not like either one of the eye products they came out with I did buy the Barbie one to try out though to see if it was a better formula than this one Because like this one just wasn't doing it for me at all Cause at first I just thought it was like the brush tip thing and I, like I said, I thought she was over exaggerated. But then I put it on myself and I was like, oh no, oh, oh, oh no, it, it's not it. Next I have the ColourPop Party Proof Eyeshadow Primer. This stuff is terrible, like oh my god, I felt like it did not last on my eyes at all. It didn't make my eyeshadow last, I felt like it, the shadows didn't stick to it really well. Like the consistency of this is really weird and I just do not like it. So I'm going to give this to my cousins and see if they can make it work somehow because I just, it was not giving, it was not doing it for me and I was like absolutely not, no, we're not doing any of that. It was not a vibe at all. Then I have the One Size fantasize mascara i actually don't like this mascara i heard a lot of people saying good things about it but i felt like it transferred on the lids of my eyes and then i don't feel like it did a good job of like spreading my lashes out and making them work for me so i'm gonna just give this to my cousin too because i just was not matter of fact no i'm not gonna give this to anybody i'm honestly just gonna throw it away i just was not impressed with this mascara at all like it didn't do anything i needed i don't like these rubbery bristles that it has on it like i just this just is not a good mascara to me so this is actually just gonna go in the trash because that's how least I liked it. And last but certainly not least, I have these Bout Face eyeshadows in it. It's Blitz. This yellow one just didn't do it for me. I was totally disappointed in this. The purple one I made work. The mint one I made work. It was just something about the yellow one that just wasn't a vibe to me and didn't do a good job. I'm going to try to use it as an eyeliner in the future and maybe hopefully it'll work out for me. Because since I bought it, obviously I want to use it. It's just... This just was not a good product to me. I was not impressed with it at all. So those are the worst products that I tried in 2022. You can comment down below and tell me if you agree or not. Um... But those are just my takes on those products. I wasn't impressed with them by any means. With the um, eyeliner, I'm thinking about throwing this away too just because it like crumbled on the eye so bad and did such a terrible job. But I might let my cousins try it out. I'm just going to use up the mascara and call it a day. But um, like I said, those are all the things I had to try that um, that disappointed me. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Remember you all the diamonds and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Be blessed, girl. Bye.